The current popularity of social-emotional learning, or SEL as it's called, represents progressive education's greatest victory. Historically, what schools taught and how they were conducted was in the hands of a locally elected school board. But gradually, during the 20th century, state commissions, state boards, and more recently, federal authorities have taken control of what is education's most fundamental question, and that is, what is most worth learning? What from a universe of ideas and thought should be taught in schools? Life's ultimate questions, what is a good human being? What is a good society? What is a worthy life? Have essentially been eliminated from the curriculum in favor of a relativistic worldview. Operationally, this has meant that the subjects of history and uh, English literature have been sanitized. Uh, the good habits and virtues and a sense of right and wrong has been replaced in our schools. But by what? By a pop psychological school program, social emotional learning, that endeavors to teach students five competencies that are very self-oriented. The self and group norms are really thin gruel upon which to base a serious moral question. This whole situation is really uh, perfectly summarized by a Connecticut uh, housewife, a mother of five uh, public school students. She said, I feel as if the school is teaching what I'm supposed to teach and I'm left with teaching what the school should teach, math. Social-emotional learning is just the latest flawed product of progressive educators, and it needs to be replaced. Major concerns about social-emotional learning are that it is a move away from academic education and an emphasis that is not healthy on attitudes, values, beliefs, and mindsets of children. And there's great subjectivity and difficulty even among adults to agree on those things. And it is also tied and closely linked to the common core and competency-based education disasters that are currently happening in the United States. Social-emotional learning is a major danger to academic achievement, to privacy, to health, there's a major concern about the scientific accuracy of this. The research base just is not there, despite all of the claims by proponents. What is especially concerning about SEL assessment is that the data from those assessments, which is often collected without parental knowledge or consent, is put into state longitudinal databases that can follow children for life. SEL represents the continued minimization of true academic work with very little research basis to back it up. A second finding is the substantial and troubling problems and consequences of SEL, especially to student privacy, to autonomy, individuality, and even freedom over their own futures. Now, a few examples of that. First, with respect to implementation, many of these programs are essentially psychological evaluations performed not by professionals who have had many years of training to do this, but by already overburdened teachers and administrators who are given a little training and then told to go and, and improve children's psyches and personalities. The assessment of children under these programs is admitted even by the most enthusiastic SEL proponents to be hit or miss. And these amateur evaluations will presumably be included in the student's school data files. Another, another problem, mistaken evaluations can lead to serious consequences to children, putting many of them on the road to further unnecessary evaluations or mistaken diagnoses, and perhaps even dangerous psychotropic medications that are already overprescribed in this country. And then I think our third central finding is that through SEL, the government is grossly overstepping its boundaries to supposedly benefit society and the economy in particular. 
By what right does the government presume to administer psychological and mental health evaluations to children, perhaps without their parents' permission? By what right does the government decide what is the correct personality for a free American citizen? By what right does government seek to transform a free citizen into the person that the government deems most useful to the state and to corporations?